All right, so we split our data into a train and test set. We used the training data um, and we saw how to implement and train a model on that training data. And then we just saw how we can actually make predictions with that train model. So let's talk about model evaluation. And it's important that we understand um, how well our model, our model actually performs. And with supervised learning models, um, we measure this, this idea of performance or model performance um, by understanding how accurate it is in making predictions, right? And this idea of prediction accuracy all comes down to the difference between the predicted value that our model provides versus the actual value of the data collected, right? And we call these different, um, or we can measure the difference between the predicted value and the actual values um, with different types of metrics or what we call loss functions. Now, which loss function we use kind of depends on what type of model we are training. Is it a regression model or a classification? Um, but then also each loss function has its own purpose. It tends to emphasize the differences in predicted values and the actual values in slightly different ways. But for regression and classification problems, the most common loss functions you will often see are mean squared error and the root mean squared error. Uh, for regression problems, and then the classification accuracy uh, for a classification model, and then also um, these things that we call recall and specificity. Um, and so with the classification model, we can actually take the predicted output versus the actual output, and we can create what's called a confusion matrix. And it kind of looks like this, and we're going to see one in a little bit. Um, but with that, what we can do is we can actually measure when our model predicts something is going to happen, but it doesn't actually happen, right? Uh, and we call that a, a false positive. Um, or we could also look at when our model predicts that something is not going to happen, but in reality, it did happen, right? So then that would be a false negative. And so this idea of recall versus specificity, um, it just emphasizes different parts of this confusion matrix depending on what we're looking for. So we'll look at one in just a, se uh, a second. Hopefully that'll kind of simplify um, uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, so first, let's talk about this idea of mean squared error um, and root mean squared error, which is uh, the most common metric within regression. Um, so the idea is, here's some code, and all we're doing is we're taking our linear regression model and we made our predictions on our test set. Um, and then we combine our, our actual values. So we can see we have two columns here. We have the predicted value from our model and then the actual sale price of the home, right? So here, when we look at this mean squared error metric that is very common, all we're doing is this, this yi minus y hat i, right? So this just says, what is the difference between the actual and the predicted value? Right? So we could take a look at the predicted value and the actual, and the difference is um, a negative 7,400. That just means that the predicted value uh, was actually predicted um, a higher sale price than the actual, and it over-predicted by close to $7,500. Right? So that's this component right here. Right? Then what we can do is we can actually square that, that value which is what we do here. So this squared value here is just this value squared. And the idea of that is twofold. One, it takes um, our you know, basically negative differences and our positive differences, and it's gonna put them all into a common unit, right? All positive values. Um, by squaring that, um, it, it eliminates this idea of that some underpredicts and some overpredicts. It just says that they all mispredict by some amount. Uh, but it also is going to emphasize when we miss uh, more than when we miss less, right? So you think about a squared value, um, when you square a larger value than a smaller value, right? It's going to have a substantially larger result than the smaller value being squared, right? And the same thing is, is happening here. So we are penalizing large miss values more than we are penalizing small miss values or small differences. All right, so once we have these differences, um, squared differences, which is this part of this metric, then the next thing is we just sum them all up and we divide them by the number of observations. And that would give us some value. 
Now, typically that value doesn't make a lot of sense initially, but when we take the square root, right, the root mean square is just this MSE, and we take the square root of that, that will then bring the value down into the units of measure of our response variable, right? So what that looks like is on this slide here, we take our linear regression model, we make our predictions on our test set, and then we combine that with the actual values, and then we compute the RMSE with this function here, and the result is 45,736. What that means is, on average, our linear regression model is mispredicting the sales price of a home by $45,000. Okay. We're going to talk about this a little bit later, and as we move throughout the course, we're going to see how different algorithms change the accuracy rate of our model. Um, but for right now, the root mean squared error, that, the, the, the squared root of that metric, is simply taking the value and bringing it down to the same measure as the target variable. All right, so that's for regression problems. Mean squared error and root mean squared R are pretty much always the metric or the most common metrics we will see. And that's what we'll see throughout this course. Now for classification, we usually have the classification accuracy, right? So that just means in a binary response, um, how many times do we predict accurately versus mispredicting um, accurately? And so we see here in our model, our classifier model that we train on logistic regression, uh, we see that our accuracy rate is 0.876. That means um, we have about an 88% accuracy rate with our model, or our, our model accurately predicts when an employee is going to leave 88% of the time. Now, we can also create that confusion matrix of our classifier model with this code that we see down here. And now we see we have our predictions made by our model. So that's in this, uh, the uh, y-axis here, or the vertical here, like the no's and the yeses. And the truth is, did they actually leave or not? Right, truth, no, yes. So we can look at this upper corner and we see that our model predicts that an employee is going to leave or not leave um, and it predicts that accurately 353 times out of all of our observations. Now our model, if we look at the lower right hand corner here, our model predicts that an employee is going to leave when in fact they do leave. So that's an accurate prediction of an employee attriting. Um, that's the, our model does it 34 times. Now we have these other diagonals and this just means our model here, the 17 says, our model predicts that an employee is going to leave when in fact they did not 17 times in our um, test set. Now in this upper right hand corner, we see that our model is predicting an employee is not going to return are not going to attrit or leave um, when in fact they did. And it did that 38 times out of our test set, right? So now we can kind of see basically the fact that when our model is mispredicting, it typically mispredicts that an employee is not going to leave when in fact they are going to. All right, so we've kind of gone through a bit of the typical process with um, creating, training, and applying a machine learning model. We're gonna build on this, but let's hit on what we, we talked about here. Um, we have basically looked at a few different steps. Step one is splitting our data, which looks like this. We can see the code on the right. Step two is once we split our data, we're gonna train our model on our training data set. And typically it looks like this, where we pick some type of algorithm we wanna implement, we specify the package we want to use to implement that algorithm, and then we train our model. Once we have a trained model, we can make predictions with that, whether it's on the training set, on the test set, or some other um, similar data set. And then we can use those predictions to evaluate the model performance. And the model performance is some loss function or some metric that compares what our model is predicting versus the actual value that we see in the data. All right, with that being said, if you got more questions, uh, make sure you read through the lesson material. 
Um, if, if you still have questions, definitely hit up the discussion board um, on Canvas.